Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. Welcome to the Video Game High School channel. Thank you very much for tuning in. I appreciate your time. Today we're going to be talking about something that's been an audience request for the past few weeks and in different forms. Uh, many of you that watch here on the channel have been saying, you know, kindly look into some of the lesser represented or I would say lesser known characters in the Arkham series, basically the Arkham games. And I say lesser known or lesser represented in quote because these characters are only not represented in the Arkham games, but they do have have a lot of screen time, a lot of face time in the comics and even in the animated series. It's just that the Ar Arkham games have not necessarily done a good job in portraying them or basically giving them their own fair share of attention. Now, I want to look at some of the logistical concerns and possibly why they haven't shown up in these games and potentially if they may be showing up in a Gotham Knights game. So before we jump into the video, I want to just ask for your support. If at any point you enjoy the video, you can go ahead and hit the subscribe button. You can go ahead and hit the like button or dislike button. And I'm sure that's going to basically help me understand what it is I need to continue doing well to serve you guys here in this community. So let's jump in. Now, we start out by looking at basically the character on the, the role gallery that you have in the Arkham games. Who are these characters? Why do they keep returning to the games in one form or the other? You know, the Riddlers and every single one of them. You know, you have the Joker basically show up even in Arkham Knight when he wasn't really the boss of Arkham Knight, but just was still kind of sort of there and basically created the boss of Arkham Knight. And then, you know, in Arkham Origins, you kind of got something fresh, which was Deathstroke. And everybody was so excited about that. But then at the end of the day in Arkham Knight, they gave him a tank battle. But then you had Bane in Arkham Origins. You had, you know, some really cool characters characters i have to say in arkham origins they did a good job in showcasing some of the newer characters that we hadn't seen but at the end of the day i know there are so many people who would love to see characters like the ventriloquist or hush or king tut or even condiment king or condiment man or whatever his name is and i think what the challenge is is having to write these characters and put them all in one game at the same time and, you know, I'm not saying that the development team at Warner Brothers Games Montreal cannot add them to their game. No, that's not the case. I think that what it may be is having to treat them right if you were to actually pack them into your game. Because if, say, you look at Arkham Origins, right? Think about, you know, the way that this team was able to bring these very new characters. But the good thing was you could fit them into the game when it came down to it. And then when it came to DLC, they focused their DLC solely on just one character. And that was Mr. Freeze in the Cold Cold Heart DLC. But then look at Arkham Knight, which was a game that came out later. And then it did its own DLC called The Season of Infamy. And they had to represent multiple characters. I don't know why, but it didn't seem like they treated them well. They brought Killer Croc, they brought Mr. Freeze, and then they brought the Mad Hatter. But it didn't feel like it was actually well done, in my opinion. So if you kind of stack up a lot of these characters into the game, I don't know if they're going to receive the treatment that you actually do want them to receive. And then even a character like the Penguin, who was kind of a side character in Arkham Knight. Yeah, he was kind of maybe there. But, you know, I think they just probably had him just for eye candy or whatever it is you want to call it. But at the end of the day, you know, think about it. What does it really entail? Uh, you know, to put a character like that in your side quest and all of that. Now, I understand, too, that some people may just want to see them even show up or make some sort of a cameo. And that's actually pretty cool. But at the end of the day, you don't want a cameo to be cheap or out of place. You actually do want that cameo to feel good and feel more organic with the entirety of the story. So this is, in my opinion, the, the, the uh, I would say, logistical challenge in bringing a lot of these characters to the Arkham games. But like I've already mentioned, it doesn't mean that Warner Brothers Games Montreal is not going to actually try to at least introduce some new characters. In fact, they did do their best to introduce some new characters in Arkham Origins. So I actually see the light at the end of the tunnel when it comes to new character representation or them actually, you know, basically changing up things or pushing the envelope a little bit. Now, the second aspect, though, is also marketing and giving their game kind of a face, if you get me. Now, what I mean by that is, you know, think about these games and think about the, the marketing and the appeal. You know, many times these, these uh, game development firms 
are trying to, you know, appeal to a broader audience who may have some knowledge of the Batman game that is not necessarily in the video games or even in the comics where we basically get to see a lot of these characters get some real good face time and their experiences from the cinematics and even from the animated series, right? So these might be some of the people that the developers may be wanting to appeal to as well. And so one easy way to do something like that is bring in what we call in quote iconic characters who basically in some sense made their cameo in the good old days and quote. So think about Mr. Freeze. Mr. Freeze has basically been in every game since Arkham City. It's insane how he's been in those games, but there is a huge appeal to the character since I think from the depiction in the movies by Arnold Schwarzenegger. I mean, it's just it's just a it's just something that you can't really argue with. So people look at Mr. Freeze and they're like, oh, the first thing they associate Mr. Freeze with is Batman. And I don't think choosing Mr. Freeze in the Gotham Knights reveal was coincidental. I think it was designed to put a face to the villainy and the rogues gallery of the game. And so it may just be that they're going to have a good mix of iconic characters and then the in quote lesser known or lesser represented characters in this Gotham Knights game in order to push the envelope and actually bring some variety. But then at the same time, how can you envision your game centered around something to deal with Batman without having the Joker put into it? <laughs> you know, as much as we may say, oh, this is some sort of an overused trope, there is no doubt that the Joker is the arch nemesis of Batman and not only Batman, but his entire family. I mean, think about it. Who, in, if you look at the reveal of this, you know, Batman said ever since Jim was killed or I think maybe Jim or died or whatever it is. I can't remember how he phrased it, uh, you know, but the, in the in the literature, Jim Gordon is murdered. And I think this may be the storyline they're drawing from. Who is behind this? Could it be one of the, in quote, iconic villains? And are they going to want to bring this so-called iconic villain in this story? They may write it to be someone who I suspect may be the Joker. And I'm not going to be surprised if the Joker actually shows up in this game. As much as that sounds as, you know, kind of an overused trope, we thought he was not going to be showing up in Arkham Knight, but then he was a significant portion of the game just basically living in Batman's head rent free. So these two um, challenges, the challenge of the logistics of treating the character right and then the challenge of the character having had or not had enough face time could be very incidental when it comes to how they're going to be bringing, you know, these in quote, less known characters to the franchise. And that is Gotham Knights. So what we have to do as a community, I think, is just to wait and see. But nonetheless, we'll be exploring a lot of character tropes. But again, remember, we don't really know where the storylines are going to be coming from. I mean, I've been able to track some of them. Some of them we know, basically, Court of Owls, and I think even the Nightfall uh, series, we're probably going to be seeing something there. But at the end of the day, until we're able to see a connection or see more information, it will be very challenging to kind of figure out, you know, the nature of the characters and the relationships that are coming in. But this doesn't stop us from exploring these characters nonetheless. And I would love to actually explore other of these characters like the Ventriloquist, uh, you know, basically and Scarface and then the replacement of the Ventriloquist. I think it's a lady. I can't remember the name at this point. And even other characters like Poison Ivy, who could get a very good, decent role when it comes to how they're going to represent all of this stuff. So it's really interesting, but I think it all boils down to the vagueness of information and the lack of information that we have right now. I think that's kind of what it is. But nonetheless, I want to hear your thoughts in the comment section. What do you guys think, uh, you know, about these, in quote, lesser represented characters? Do you think that there is uh, a way that Warner Brothers Games Montreal is going to be bringing some of them to the screen? I think there is because they actually brought, you know, Electrocutioner and, you know, uh, I think the I can't remember the name of the uh, villain that had the venom or the poison or whatever it is. I can't remember their name, uh, but they brought these characters to, you know, to the, to the screen. They also brought the lady assassin as well can't even remember her name honestly they were kind of side characters in my opinion and they brought deathstroke to the you know to the front of everything so their own character and role gallery was quite uh unique in arkham uh, origins so that's why i kind of see them actually taking some of these characters and bringing them to the screen but my hope is they're able to give them some really good treatment at the end of the day I'll stop this video now. I'll talk to you guys in another video. Like I said, I want to hear your thoughts in the comment section. Hopefully, we'll talk in another video. Thank you very much for listening. Peace out.